going to talk about trigger length today and what size trigger should you have. The honest difference between short and curved is it doesn't matter as long as your hand's contacting the center. So <clears throat> my hand's pretty normal sized and shaped and I contact the center. If you have a hand where you're contacting high or low on the trigger, then you'd want a flat. But other than that, flat and curved don't make that much difference. The length, however, makes a huge difference. So what's really important is that your finger, when it's bent, gonna, and it's going to activate the trigger, is parallel to your body. So your body's here, trigger's here, and I want them to kind of be on the same, not kind of, I want them to be on the same plane. So if you looked at this from the side, my finger's about 90 degrees here, that's exactly what I want. What happens there is you use less muscles and ligaments in your hand and you get less sympathetic movement in the gun. It's easier for you to activate that trigger and not move the gun, right? All that we want from a good trigger length and a good trigger break in our 1911 or 2011 pistols is simply I get on the trigger, I make the decision it's going to go, I, it goes, and the sights don't move. And there's always some influence there, but we want to minimize that as much as we can. So that 90 degree here is a big deal. It helps a lot. So the Gephardt triggers that we have are really cool. The shoe will come all the way off. So if you get an Atlas gun or you buy a bow, a trigger shoe bow and combo, you can just take this off, switch it out, and you've got, you know, you can order just a shoe off the website. So that part's cool. There's other trigger systems that do similar stuff, so um, this will be applicable to them. Just the, the sizes might be slightly different. But generically, what I would say is that we're going to measure our hands just if we're at home to get a, <clears throat> a size. So from the tip of my finger out to the first major wrinkle, kind of where my wrist starts, it's just just like seven and a quarter inches on my hand. I want it to be perfectly straight, almost seven and a half. <clears throat> so that gives me my general hand length. Then I stick my tape measure in here and see where I'm at. My finger right from the web end is three inches. So that puts me just on the short side of medium. So what triggers will work for that hand size? <clears throat> so this, you know, on a whole gun just like that one, I'd probably be a medium um, curved. So the question ends up being what are the distances? So we'll put up a distance chart but a medium curved is about 430 thou out from the from where the grip starts in a PT Evo grip. Just for comparison a short curved is going to be 230 thou. The long curved, right in the dead center, it's going to be 540 thou. So there's your curved. On the shorts, on the flats, I mean, we get a little bit more adjustability. There's a few more. So, and these are all set to the zero, they're about as short as they'll get. So you get 240 thou on the, uh, 240 on the short flat. Medium flat is going to add about 150, I think. So the medium flat is going to run at just over 400. We're going to be just over 500 on the, or that was the short flat, excuse me. The medium flat going to run like 500 and then the flat long will be a tad more than that. Now the other cool part on these is that again they're adjustable so how much adjustment can we get in each one we'll look at at the end of the video here. Medium flat we're going to run all the way out to just just about 600 thou all the way in. So again <clears throat> That's with these adjusted all the way to the, where they're almost at the, you know, they're at the end of the travel. So on this medium curved, actually we'll, we'll be scientific about it. We were here, so we're going to go out one, two, three rotations. This is probably a little longer than we want to go out. So what happens when you go too far is you'll get a little bit of a gap here, but we'll call that maximum change. And then when we go all the way out, we've increased to 486,000. 
off of, I think about 400. So there's about there's about 70 there's about 50 to 75 thousandths of adjustment throughout all these triggers. So if you get one, and then it's a little bit of work, but if you have a milling machine, you can also mill some off the back and bring them back. So if you ever see me shooting, the medium flat triggers are a tad bit long for my hand with that three inch trigger finger. I'm just a little bit pointed away. My gun actually has a medium flat trigger in it and we just trim the back. So you can actually shorten them up a little bit. There's some room to, to move there. Probably not something you're gonna do on a Dremel, but um, if you have some kind of milling capabilities, it's, it's a low soft aluminum, it's not that hard to mill. So that is your trigger length um, guide. And those different sizes are um, kind of your generic starting point. So again, my finger's three inches this length. That's starting in the short flat or the medium curved and then adjusting from, from there. Remembering that the triggers have about 75 thou of forward adjustment in them if you need them to be a little bit longer. Hopefully that was helpful. We'll see you guys on the range soon.